Welcome everybody, good evening. Welcome to another webinar by Global Education's Virtual Expo. Um, we've got an exciting opportunity for you all to listen into over here. It's um, a school that I absolutely love and this university does some wonderful things worldwide as well. It's St. George's University. We're gonna be listening to the School of Medicine with Victoria, um, who's actually lived in Granada, who I've just found out in one of the most beautiful places that you'll ever see and can't believe it's actually a university there as well. Um, she's based out of Kenya and um, I'm in, sitting here in Perth in Western Australia, so a truly global webinar event for everybody today. We've got, um, I think it was just around 60 people that have signed up for this webinar. Um, we're going to give it a couple seconds for people to join in before I hand over to Victoria to start. Um, as always, just some housekeeping rules as well. Please put all your questions in the chat box area, um, whether it's the Q&A section or in the chat section, and we'll go through those um, directly after the presentation. Um, please, as always, participate. We're here to help. Um, no question is, um, as in other words, silly. Um, we're here to help, and um, I'm sure you'll be as enthusiastic as I am to listen to this one as well. Victoria, um, we've got quite a handful of people that have signed on, so um, I'm happy to hand over to you and um, please introduce yourself. Good luck. Okay. Uh, thank you, George. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Victoria Kimotho. Um, you can address me as Vicky, it's fine. Um, I'm from St. George's University School of Medicine, uh, which is in West Indies. I am the manager for recruitment for East and South Africa. I have my colleague who's in West Africa, and my work mainly is to take you through, um, if you're in the process of thinking of becoming a doctor, I walk you through that. And after that, I help you through um, going through the application process. I work with global education to get you through that. Um, they're pretty awesome at doing that. And then at the same time, I work with the admissions team to make sure that they assess all your documents in the right way, considering where you're coming from and being an international student, how does this play into your application? And, and then by the time you get on a plane, we'll be very good friends uh, because I get to uh, talk to you about every step of the way until you're in class on your first day of orientation. Um, in this period where COVID-19 has changed the way we work, um, the new normal means some students have been studying online now this going into a year. And um, I still have contacts with all the students who have started their first year. I am seeing them through completing their first year in med school. So you have me for quite a while. So we, we walk together through the journey. And I, I try as much as possible to um, take care of you or to anticipate situations that could come up. So um, I hope that you will reach out and let me know where you are and what you're thinking of doing. Now, um, Global Education has been with us over the last over about five years now. We are nearly five years together. Um, so they understand St. George's very well. Um, some of the team members have even been on campus. So they will be able to predict, to give you the information that you need. And my work is to just add on, but you're not limited to talking to any of us. We work together as a team. Okay, so um, I'll just be giving you a presentation. The presentation is set out in terms of uh, specific questions and we try and answer 10 questions as we go through the presentation. These 10 questions uh, cover any question that uh, typical medical school student would be asking. Some of the terms I will use may be new to you. I'll try as much as possible to explain them as we go along. And if you require me to, um, to slow down or repeat something, uh, if you put it like, like George said, put it on the chat, put it on the Q&A, and we will address your concerns. So welcome to St. George's. So some of you might have already gone online and seen some of the videos of the campus. This is our campus. So Grenada is an island in the Caribbean. It's on the windward side of the, of the Caribbean island. So 
before you get to Grenada or understand the whole windward side of the islands, um, most people have never considered uh, understanding how the Caribbean islands are laid out. So Grenada is one of the small ones, uh, closer to Trinidad, Tobago and Barbados, and they are closer to South America than North America. So your North America ones would be Puerto Rico, uh, Dominica, uh, Bermuda, Caymans. Those are the islands that are higher up towards North America. And of course, Jamaica, for those of you who know it. Um, if you're a reggae fan, you'll be thinking, oh, I'm coming to an island where there's reggae. Well, we have more than reggae. We have soccer music. And this is where we have carnivals. And Trinidad, of course, beats most of us. But yeah, the, the carnivals are pretty fun. And you have the most beautiful beaches around you. As you can see, the campus has over 65 buildings and these are lecture halls. We have a huge library. Um, we have everything from uh, study groups. We have uh, accommodation within the campus and it is built for medical school. So when you come to St. George's, um, you are in a space that just inspires you to study medicine. So we have labs, we have high-tech anatomy sessions uh, where virtual reality is used and different things are used. So you just don't do um, basic medical training. It's, it's actually uh, pretty high-tech. Now, um, the island itself has 100,000 people. I lived on the island. I did my master's in public health in Grenada. So I know the island pretty good. And um, I did my research on the island. So I know the towns around uh, St. George's. So this is the capital city of, of Grenada. It's called St. George's and that's where the university is located. Now, you might think it's, um, it's a rural area. It's actually a cosmopolitan island and the university uh, uh, contributes about 40% of the GDP of the island. So as a student, when you get to Grenada, you are actually received pretty well from all the way from the airport until you come on campus. So as we go along, you will learn more about Grenada. So Grenadians are mostly Afro-American um, because it's, it's a mix of Afro and Asian uh, of Indian origin. And we have all the religions there. The Baptist church is very strong. Uh, the Muslim community is huge. And therefore, um, and we have Hindus, Sikhs. So there's nearly every religion that you can think of. And of course we have other, other things that go on on the island. It has beautiful resorts. So we're talking about um, the level where Hamilton, for those who watch F1, Formula One, those are the resorts that he goes to. So we have everything from $12,000 hotels to uh, your $200, $50 hotel. So you can actually um, holiday on the island. They are programs by the Grenada government. Um, so Grenada, um, St. George's actually gives spaces to Grenadians to come and study medicine. So there's a scholarship that's offered by the Grenadian government to Grenada study medicine. But the campus also has a School of Arts and Sciences that services the whole, all, the whole of the Caribbean students. Uh, we have a um, postgraduate studies uh, program, PhDs in anything from anatomy to public health to um, to how to teach anatomy. You know, there's so many things to, for you to do. Now, we are in the Caribbean, but we are, we are a US medical school, meaning we are equivalent to any medical school in the US. However, the fact that we're in the Caribbean, we're known as an international medical school for the US mainland. Um, and we do have our students ending up practicing in the UK or the US. I would say for international students, it's much better for you to go to the US. Now, moving on, uh, we have graduated 18,000 physicians who have worked in over 50 countries in the world, including South Africa. And we have had South African students who have continued on 
to specialize uh, in the US or the UK. We have had South African students who completed the MD degree and decided to come back to South Africa. And now they're specialists themselves in South Africa. So there are many pathways for you to take as you come and graduate from us. We have a Ugandan who graduated uh, and went to the US and decided to work in Australia. So we have very many different uh, people who are in different parts of the world. So question one, will I get a US residency? And you wonder why I am starting at the end of your journey. Uh, residency is what in the US is, is uh, the specialization section of your studies. This is after you graduate from us and you require to join a residency program. So in other places in, in South Africa, it, it's called, I think it's a specialization, which is a MMED in or masters in, medi in medicine, or in other places it's called, uh, uh, well, in, in the UK, it's a specialization. So it's a, it's a period where you, you become a specialist in internal medicine, in surgery, in pediatrics, in OBSGYN. That's a residency. Now, for every international student who does the U.S. system and wants to work in the U.S., you must find a residency. So 92% of our eligible non-U.S. 2020 graduates who applied for the U.S. postgraduate position, which is a residency, team one at the time of graduation. That's why I usually say, if you study hard, get the grades, have everything lined up, your ducks are in a row, you should be able to get your specialization within, uh, like you graduate this week and next week you're already in your specialization. So getting 92% of non-US students to do that is not a, a simple fit. And many international schools cannot say that. We say it because we are the number one provider into the first year US residencies for the last 11 years combined. So in 2020, we have 1,110 US residencies secured because we graduate about 1,200 students every year. We have big classes and we have many physicians, but we are so good at what we do that the student who went to Harvard and you can compete for the same residencies. And you do not lose anything studying with us because you're competing on an even, on the same level as a student who went to the US. Now, the student who went from South Africa to the US will have done three, four years of undergrad, and then they apply for med school. A student who comes to us goes directly into a five-year program and they complete. So you take less time studying with us than going to US mainland. No other medical school in the world provides more new doctors into the US healthcare system. So Gift is an amazing, uh, amazing, amazing lady. And she says she highly recommends SGU without hesitation. Now, the beauty of coming to us is you can actually get a chance to talk to all these graduates who have gone into different specializations. So down the road, as you get into the whole application process, we get the alumni, the people who are specializing to come in and talk to you and explain to you your journey. So you never walk alone when you wait St. George's. So uh, Roxanne from South Africa, she graduated MD 2017. She's saying she's glad she took the journey. I feel like exactly where I need to be and needing to be meaning she is well positioned in whichever space she walks into because of the reputation of the university. SGU is the second largest um, producer of physicians of the US workforce. The first one is Indiana University. And Indiana University is an old school, 200 years. We're talking uh, 40 something years and we had 10,791. But remember, it's 10,791 quality physicians, meaning they secure residences. And I'm sure by next year we'll be number one because we are about to beat Indiana. So cheering us on, we shall see how it goes in 2021. The Office of Career Guidance and Student Development supports you to develop your personalized residency strategy. So from day one, we already are helping you plan where you're going to end up. So we take care of that. How will SGU Clinical Network help me obtain a residency? Now, when we talk about clinical network, there's a stage within your training 
where you go for what we call clinical rotations. Clinical rotations is the same as an internship that you do before you graduate, meaning you're in a hospital, you are definitely the least qualified person in that in the staff, even the nurses are more qualified than you. So your work is to learn. You're under supervision, you are practicing medicine to a level. Um, that is when you are allowed to make mistakes, but don't kill anyone because somebody's always checking you. Somebody is always supervising you. So in all the places where our students go for clinical rotations, we have uh, staff who are St. George's staff and the hospital staff who make sure that you're performing at your best and they make sure that you're not making mistakes or you're learning from each experience you go through. So we have over 70 hospitals uh, and health systems in three countries. So there's the US, there's Canada and the UK. At this point, the best route for you would be the US, but the UK is also available. So we have over 20 hospitals there and they're very good hospitals. The top 20 hospitals in the US are where some of our students go. Canada has fewer spaces for you because we are now having a huge number of Canadians who are coming to study with us. So there are spaces, but they're limited. I wouldn't want to, um, I wouldn't want you to plan for Canada. The route to go to Canada, what would happen is you go to the US, you specialize, get the license and then move to Canada in future. So these are options that you can take. For the UK, you have clinical rotations in the hospitals. And when you graduate, you get into a foundation two years and then you specialize. So these are some of the routes. Does my education at St. George's University prepare me for USMLE? Now, USMLE is the US Medical Licensing Exam. The US Medical Licensing Exam has three stages. There's step one, which you do in your, if you're doing a five-year program, you would do it in your third year. If you're doing a four-year program, you would do it in your second year. And step one is a pass or fail. So you don't have much choice there. You either pass or you fail. Now, Step two, you do during your last two years of, of your studies in a hospital where you've chosen to do your, your clinical rotations. We don't choose for you. You can choose to do US, US or UK, it's up to you. Now, USMLE step two has two stages. There's clinical knowledge and clinical skills. So you have to be in the hospital to take those. But at the same time, you're our student and you're still taking exams from the school. So you have to be on point but we make sure you're ready. SGU students from 48 countries had 94% first time pass rate. So if you're coming to us, you must be an A or a B student at the minimum. Uh, we do not take med students who are lower than that because right from the beginning, we are expecting you to perform at the same level that other students are performing. 94% first time pass is actually very good considering we are multicultural, multi-continent uh, students. The students come from everywhere in the world and they still perform as well because from day one, your exams are always in the same format as the US medical licensing exam um, format. So you're used to taking exams like that. By the time you get to your step one, you're actually well prepared and we assess you, and, and this might be um, hard for you to think of now, but every four weeks from the day you come to campus, you're taking an exam. And you're taking an exam that we expect you to get 80% and above for each exam. So you don't come in and, and rest on the laurels and go to the beach on day one. Uh, well, day one, you just go to class and you start studying. But um, I'll tell you later how we support you. So this is the most important slide for you when you're trying to think of where you come in. So a student who has done O-levels and feels, I don't want to do A-levels, I don't feel like doing AS, I don't feel like doing anything else, I want to go to med school. Uh, if you have A's on all six subjects, um, all your sciences, and you are recommended by your teachers and your parents are willing to let you go, we let you do a seven-year program. That means you do three years of preclinical, four years of med school. 
And those ones can be, if you can see the flags at the bottom, it can be in, in you first start in Grenada and then you can decide to do the UK and then choose to go to Grenada again or India and then come to the UK and then Grenada and then UK or US. So we have multiple campuses where you can study. Now, uh, a typical matric student who has done IEB or the national matric, any of the two, you are accepted into a six year MD program. The six year MD program means you do two years of preclinical and four years of MD. Now, the six year program, once you come in, you're not applying again. Your only work is to maintain a 3.2 GPA out of four. So that means you score 80% on every exam and you automatically promote to the next level. That's the only thing we require from you. Now, a uh, six year MD is actually good for you because you take two years before you now get into the whole, you're already studying medicine in preclinicals, except you're not as intense as when you do the MD program. Now, let's say you've decided to do IB diploma or A-levels. Now, IB diploma uh, and A-level students or the India uh, exams, you are allowed to come and do a five-year program. So you don't have to do the first two years. You only do year three of preclinical and the four-year program. Again, you must have scored high points for IB diploma. We only expect you to have 32 and above, but you must have five and above in all the, all the subjects. Um, in uh, A-levels, we expect you to have A's and B's minimum. A combination of the two is actually much better. Uh, no, a combination of two is allowed, but A's are much better. Now for uh, matric, we expect you to have done life sciences, physical sciences, and maths uh, at the minimum. And you must have scored highly. You must be over 75% on every of those um, exams. Definitely, you, you don't fail everything else because you still have to show that you can manage all the subjects. Now, somebody who has done a Bachelor of Science, let's say you went to University of Pretoria or Cape Town or Stellenbosch or whatever in South Africa, or you left the country, you went to Australia, you did a bachelor's, and now you still want to study medicine and you don't get a space. So we take you, but we only take you if you have, again, your grades are higher than let's say 75% or 80% even better. Um, and the reason we do that is you have to have a strong science uh, bachelor's. So if you've done a bachelor of arts in IT, uh, there's a way we can get you in but you have to prove yourself first for us to take you. It's because we give you a year of what we call the post back. Post back is uh, a year where you learn the sciences and prove yourself in sciences, and then you join the four-year program. But if you have a Bachelor of Science, we're good with you. You come in and you do your four-year program. Now, the different countries combinations you can do, if you want to end up in the UK at the end of your studies, um, I would suggest don't do the UK years first. You, um, you do Grenada, Grenada, and then do the UK at the end. The reason for that is the UK has 50-50 uh, or 50% 50 of your time can be spent in the UK when you're studying at an international university. So we advise you on that from day one. But um, you can choose to do uh, the UK then Grenada, like year two of MD, everybody has to come to Grenada because you're taking your USMLE step one. And then you can choose to do US and US at the end. But um, the beauty of studying with us, you come with your A-levels or your matric and in year two with extra units, you get a bachelor of science. And then when you graduate, you're postgraduate MD. That is MD um, medical doctor. So the difference between this, this system and your local system, which is because in Kenya, in South Africa, in Botswana, in all those countries, you do a bachelor of, of, of med medicine with surgery as well. The reason we do that is in developing countries, we need all the doctors to be surgeons. Now in the MD US system, you become a surgeon after you graduate. So it's a different system and that's how it works. Um, then 
the last two years, year three and four for everyone is clinical rotations. And I've touched on that. And the beauty of doing that with us is you can do UK one year and US one year, or you can do US US, or you can do UK UK. So whichever combination works for you and your future plans, uh, that's the one you take. Now, let's say you do your USMLEs and you fail and you try again and you fail, which we don't expect to happen, but it can happen. What happens is means you can't do the US, um, you, you can't do the US uh, clinical rotation because you have to have the USMLE, but we can work with you and get you into a UK rotation. Um, however, we will need you to pass all the other exams for you to be able to promote into a clinical rotation. So it's not like we let you get into the UK system because you failed. We still need you to pass other things for us to let you go there. I'll move on to the next slide. So you've heard me talking about our UK, um, the connection to the UK. It's because we have a partnership with Northumbria University in Newcastle and St. George's. So the program is actually under St. George's Medical School, but in partnership with Northumbria. And this campus is in Newcastle, and that's why you get an opportunity to be in our campus in the UK. And then we do have another one in India with Ramaya, the medical school. Uh, Ramaya Medical School in India is actually one of the top med schools. So we, you can do one year in India and then come back and do uh, the rest of it in either the UK or in Grenada. So uh, it helps you broaden your understanding of different cultures or the fact that you're doing, uh, you're doing a period in the UK, you get to learn more about our UK system. How will I be supported to succeed in my medical education? We know medical education is very, very demanding. And therefore we understand that you need to have support right from the beginning. Uh, when I was doing my master's, I actually used the Department of Education Services because I hadn't studied in an American system before. So I had to learn how to, um, how to, um, how to understand how the system works. Uh, some people go in for workshops where they learn how to uh, manage their time because you're coming from high school. High school to medical school is very different. So we have um, small group learning, we have student wellness and support, and we have personal and professional development. Professional development means we walk with you with a goal uh, of where you want to end up and we make sure you're taking the right pathway. So you have a career, it's like your career guidance teacher, except now you have a career guidance department that takes you through it. So we have an eight to one ratio of students to faculty in 75% of classes and the labs. That means um, when you're doing your lectures, you are in groups of, so let's say we've taken a thousand students, you're split into colleges and colleges are like 200 students. And that again is split into uh, groups of eight students and eight students, each eight students has a faculty member who's assigned to them. So you never do your labs by yourself. You do, or in a big group of 200, you do it in a group of eight, which means the tutor who's with you, who's a medical doctor, by the way, can explain, for example, if you're learning about the digestive system or certain things to do with endocrinology or how um, sugar or insulin works in your body, they will be able to ground it for you. So you learn the chemistry of it, but they ground it for you in terms of understanding how that reflects on the body or what effect it has or cases they have seen. So you're very lucky because you have this person with you throughout and they're different ones for different units. Now your lectures are in 200 people, but you split into these other small groups. Uh, we have a dedicated support system. Um, there are state of the art facilities. As you can see, those are spaces where you would be um, in class. And we have interactive team instructions. And we, 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 do, we, we take a lot of time with you in terms of assigning you an advisor right from the beginning. 
and the advisor's doors are actually open for you to go to them. So if there's something you didn't understand in a lecture and you really need to follow up again, you either take the video recording of the lecture and go through it again, or you have a chance to go to the lecturer and say, I need uh, some more information. But more than that, we have what we call uh, DS, the Department of Education Services. I'll explain to you how that works. So we have close to 2,000 faculty, 1,500 clinical faculty, uh, 465 com campus-based faculty in Grenada, and then we have visiting professors. So you always have somebody who's there. So this department, um, I'll just go back one slide. Oh, sorry about that. So this is the Department of Education Services that supports your success. They are there just for you. So like I said, you get to the island, you're an A student and you're thinking, oh, I know these things, I can handle them. No, just humble yourself and go for the workshops. Time management skills, study skills, test taking skills, note taking skills, and more efficient learning techniques. So some of the students will tell you, when I was doing biochemistry, when I used this method to learn, I passed my exams, I didn't struggle. But when I was doing anatomy, I needed a different technique. So you might as well as learn all the techniques so that you know what to do. Then we have study groups. Study groups are where you have a peer, a student like you, who is, um, who is a peer like educator, you're together and they are probably a year ahead of you and they are coming to teach you so that they can prepare for USMLE by teaching. You have tutorials where the lectures, um, the lecturer and the tutor work together to give you extra lessons or coaching. Um, I think in Kenya, we call them tuition. It's like extra class um, where if you're struggling with the subject, you need help. So what they can do is they assign the tutor to you and they walk with you until you take the exam. Uh, biochemistry shows makes people go for those sessions because you don't want to fail when you have support and you have a tutor who can take you through. Let's talk teaching workshops for the faculty. So we teach them new methods of, of communicating with students and all our faculty actually evaluated by students after every unit. So we always are on top of how they're performing. And we have the international office and support and student support. So our international office was founded about six years ago. And the idea is because you're international students, you're coming from different culture, um, you have a different way of, of looking at life. You can get lost in, in the whole US um, medical school. So we give you a space where you can breathe and meet people and meet faculty. And we have activities for you so that you have one-on-one -on -one and a chance to interact with lecturers and also a time to just lay back and, and have like a South Africa day where you can do a braai or, and then since you're always so busy, you might not be able to meet people. We give you a chance to interact with that. So uh, it, it's just our way of making sure you're doing okay. Um, then we have what we call the psychological services and the psychological services department is um, they are actually over 60 psychologists. Uh, we know studying medicine is not easy. Uh, when you become you're becoming a doctor, everyone has expectations from on you from home uh, on yourself. And sometimes some people already have some mental health challenges like anxiety or other challenges. And therefore we know that you need that support system. This department is there for you. It is, um, they are only available for students and you can set up like, let's say you need therapy uh, from home. You can get a recommendation from your therapist so that you can continue on campus. And anything that you discuss in this department from the time you enter the door, even registering your name there, it's all anonymous. So nothing is shared with your academic records that comes from that department. They are there just for you. I've had a student who um, used to suffer from anxiety um, to do exams. And once they started using this service, they would then train their minds to prepare to take exams. And they are now 
actually uh, doing a fellowship, which comes after the specialization, where they're becoming a vascular cardiovascular a cardiovascular surgeon. So yeah, asking for help is not a bad thing. You just need to know it's there. Okay, so where will my SGU medical degree allow me to practice medicine? Train here, practice anywhere in the US or Canada. SGU graduates have practiced in more than 50 countries. I let you know that. Now, you do not, as an international student, it's not a good idea for you to finish the MD and come back home immediately. That means you still have to do, for example, in South Africa, you have to do two years of community service before you go and specialize. So why not um, stay in the US or the UK, get into a specialization, and that period when you're specializing or doing residency, you're actually employed anyway, and get your specialization and then come back home. Because when you come back, like in to South Africa, you come back and you do uh, six months community service and you get into your license. So why do it the hard way? However, let's say you have family commitments that need you to come home, you can come home and you will not have any problems to with your board to get your licensing done because they have done it before for SGU students. Now, SGU is accredited to support your medical career path. So Grenada Medical and Dental Council is actually one of our main accreditors. And the reason is because they are, we are based in Grenada and the Grenada Medical and Dental Council has been accredited to the US, um, the US uh, accreditation body. Meaning any students who comes to St. George's studies under this accreditation, they are accredited in the US. Now, because of your clinical rotation, the US Department of Education deemed SGU accreditation comparable to US accreditation. So you do not have a problem uh, with accreditation because you come and study at St. George's. There are many Caribbean schools and there are many cheaper Caribbean schools. However, you have to be careful to find out what's the accreditation like. Now we have proven time and time again that we are accredited, we are the number two um, provider of doctors in the US, so that's not a problem for St. George's. What will my life be like at SGU? Now, uh, remember I mentioned the different campuses and, and then I'll give you some insights on life on campus. So this is our campus and um, that's your library, the one at the top um, left-hand corner. Uh, at the top completely is your library. Then we have a state-of-the-art gym. Now, studying medicine is not easy, and therefore we do realize that you need to have an outlet. So you're either in the gym or you're swimming or you're running or you're walking. So we have, actually, we have like joggers um, who jog on the main road. Um, I used to walk because I couldn't do the run, but it's just a way of releasing um, that tension. And then we have, um, we have many restaurants on campus and we also have like vendors who come and bring specific food from different parts of the world. So you do have a choice of, of where to eat, but in within your accommodation, you have a kitchen with basic uh, appliances and you can cook for yourself. And then the buses run on campus and outside campus because you leave on campus the first year, you must leave on campus. After that, you can choose to leave off campus. If you leave off campus or you leave on campus, there's always a bus passing by every 20 minutes. And the reason is we have a fleet of over 70 buses. They don't all look like this. Some of them are actually coasters, so they're all different. Now, accommodation, um, the first, your first year, um, since you have to live on campus, you can either get a room of two people sharing and it has a bathroom and a toilet inside the room, and then you share the common area, or three people sharing with a bathroom and a toilet inside and a common area. As you get into upper class man, you could have a one person room uh, with a bathroom and a toilet inside, but those are very rare especially for the, the preclinical years. 
and with a common area. Then we have the older rooms, the new rooms, so you do get accommodation area. And in North Ambria, you have accommodation that is kind of similar, and it's in Newcastle. And of course, you can sit and watch the sea when you're taking a break. Now, our students, as you can see, they're always happy. It's, um, it's, it's what you do when you're on campus. So um, this is what we call like uh, the white coat ceremony. And sometimes we have students clubs and the clubs can be, or organizations can be based on where you come from. They can be based on your religion. They can be based on your cultural background. Um, I used to be in, um, in the African Students Association where I was president for a while. And then we had the um, Public Health and Medical Students Association where we would come together and do community work in Grenada. And the vet students would join us and they would uh, take care of the, in, inoculate the dogs and we would be taking care of taking blood pressure and all that. So it's actually um, a very good uh, way of meeting other people um, on campus by being part of an organization. And then we have family visits where your family can come and visit. So we have those as well. And then the carnival is always fun. And then this is one of the Hindu um, ceremonies where you do the colors and all. So everything is, is actually done on campus. So we have during Ramadan, um, when we have Eid al-Fitri, there, there are people who are celebrating that, there would be events happening on campus to mark those days. Of course, if there are exams, then they find another day to do it. So these are some of the things that come into play. Now, uh, like I say, the gym is awesome. It is well covered then. We are the second best scuba diving um, place in the Caribbean. So if you want to take on scuba diving, this is the place to do it. So instead of coming home during summer, you might as well as join a scuba diving club and learn something. Um, and then we have arts at school, like people do art and they can exhibit their art. And yoga seems to be one of the favorite activities at sunrise or sunset, it's all beautiful. Now, one of the things that happens with, um, with our students, we definitely do not have teams, like official teams. So it's not like you can go, go Giants or anything uh, because all of you are studying so hard and you don't have time for organized sports. So we have football teams, but people just play within themselves. Uh, we have a football team, a cricket, a cricket field, and you have a basketball court that is flood leap. So 2 a.m. ball can be played. Then how can I see where I'll be studying medicine? Um, okay, sorry, I was just seeing a question on matric. I think I've covered where you come in as matric. How can I see where I'll be studying is you can go online. If you have um, the VR glasses, you can walk around campus and this, what you're seeing now is what we call St. George's, which is the city itself. And you can see it's actually pretty beautiful. It's, it's awesome. I like walking around the city. And then CSGU, one of the most important decisions you will ever make deserves a closer look. So once COVID-19 uh, restrictions are lifted, you can do a campus tour. You just come in, sit in class and listen, or you can get a Dean invite. Uh, dean invite gives you access to nearly everything just to see or understand what you'd be studying. And then in summer, we usually have summer classes um, where students come for 10 days or 12 days, depending on over 18, you come for 12 days and you would be in class, you would do everything a student does. Um, so over 200 current first year students visited the campus, that's in 2020 before the restrictions came. Is there financial aid? This is a very important question. So we do have scholarships and um, we call them bursaries. And what it does, it can pay maybe up to 30% of your tuition fees but you'd have to find the other 80%. So we do have it. Um, the more you volunteer, the more you show your, your leadership skills and things like that, those are very useful in, um, in getting you the scholarship. 
but all of you are A and B students, so that wouldn't be the competing factor. It's everything else you do. How do I apply? Applications are actually very direct. We have the simplest medical school application that exists because um, if you go to global, they will take you through the application process and support you through every step and all the documents you need. So you apply online, so the application is completed online. And then you submit all academics, um, that's your transcripts. So for the transcripts, you are allowed to give us your predictive grades. So let's say you're taking your exams in November, you can already get your predictive grades from your school and come in with that and we can process your application. Let's say you're doing a Bachelor of Science and you're in your last semester, you can send in all your transcripts until that point. And then we, for those two, we would give you provisional acceptance. And then you need letters of recommendation. We need two, which must be on a letterhead and signed by the school. And then English exam results, you can take IELTS UKVI if you're planning to come to the UK program, or you can take Pearson's or you can take TOEFL. It's very demanding because we require you to score very high. So you must have more than 104, 124, 104 TOEFL. You must have a 7.0 average for IELTS, uh, which means all the bands must be 7.0 and above. And if you don't get those, uh, we will not throw you out if you have the grades. What we will do is you do an extra term just to strengthen your medical English. It's called a medical English program. So we do take care of that. Then extracurricular activities, uh, we do expect you, right now with COVID, there's so many restrictions, it probably can't happen, but we would expect you to have volunteered, shadowed doctors, but it's not like we need you to do 20 hours and they're signed. We just need you to have an idea of why you want to become a doctor. So you must have interacted with hospitals and spaces like that for you to understand why. Because if you write, the next thing that's in, in required is a personal statement of 500 words. Um, the personal statement must show why you want to be a doctor. So if you write a personal statement that goes, it's my passion, this is what I love, without explaining why it's your passion or why you love it, then your personal statement doesn't serve the purpose it has. So we do expect you to talk about either your experiences or what you've seen in your country, or have an idea of, of how the world is working. So especially like now, um, if you're talking about COVID-19, we don't expect you to just say, oh, there's COVID-19 and I want to contribute by being a doctor. No, we expect you to tell us a little bit more. Um, how are the cases in South Africa? Is it is it being managed or is prevention something that works or is treatment or vaccines, are they coming in good time? You know, have a little, like argument about it or not argument or have a discussion about it. Show us you have thought deeply into these things. Of course, we don't expect you to be a medical person. So we don't expect you to give us a personal statement that's based in medicine, but we do expect you to know basic things that you see in newspapers or discussions that are happening um, or, or people are talking about, let's say maternal death where you're saying, why? does a mother in Africa die giving birth? You know, then you tell us, that's why I want to be an OBS guy. Now I get you. And then we, we expect you to take a scan of your passport bio page. So your most important thing is your personal statement and your grades and your English. Those must be good. Now, um, we don't take you on the basis of that because we need to get to know you a little bit. So once those are assessed by a committee, you're then invited for an interview. The interview has nothing to do with biology and chemistry. We don't even ask you anything to do with that. We want to know how you think, how do you cope with situations? Um, who are you? Uh, why do you want to be a doctor? What you wrote in your personal statement, can you express it? So it's a discussion, it's nothing to do with, with the academics. Of course, we do, we do assess your academics. So the interviewer, who is a doctor themselves, has gone through SGU, knows what it takes to become a, a medical doctor and to go through SGU. And then your admission decision comes and you accept the offer. 
once you accept the offer, you need to pay your deposit so that you can secure your spot. Then travel to Grenada or the UK or wherever you're going and then start studying medicine. So one of the things that you can never um, take too long with is between the time you send us all the documents, including a confidential financial statement from your parents saying how they would pay your fees, um, you then can get this processed in three to four weeks. So you would have a results. Once the documents are in two weeks flat, you have your answers. You have an interview, you set it up, you get it done. And then um, the interviewer usually turnaround time is less than 24 hours and a decision is made on your application that first. So the earlier you do it, the better so that you get a conditional acceptance and then you know where you're going and what's coming next. No, why SGU? Why is SGU the place to start my medical career? We offer you outstanding residency placement rates. So we've talked about it. We can get you there. Clinical rotations in 70 plus leading hospitals. And we're not just talking any leading hospitals, we're talking Mayo Clinic, Mount Sinai, um, all the top hospitals in the US. We have them on the list. We, we can get you there. Small class experience with benefits of a larger school. That means you are exposed to what a larger medical school has, but we still make it small enough for you to be able to maneuver through it. Curriculum and ac academic support leads to outstanding USMLE results. We are very proud of that. And state-of-the-art teaching facilities, accommodation, and student life opportunities. So when I talked about top hospitals, these are some of the top hospitals in the US. So this is not our, our list. It is from the News and World Report, 2019, 2020. So Mayo Clinic right at the top, Cleveland Clinic, John Hopkins, New York Presbyterian, UCLA. All these are the places where anyone who wants to practice medicine and specialized medicine wants to be. So we do have our students there. So, and we have international students as well. So it's not just, um, the US students, it's all the students, they get in. SGU alumni network of doctors in all specialties who have successful careers around the world. So you would be part of a network that you can reach out to. So for example, um, the government of Botswana, we've been training their doctors since I think now, since the eighties. And we have trained over 200 doctors for Botswana and they're in the country. And they can reach out to their colleague in New York and ask, um, I am seeing the symptoms. Um, this, is, um, this is something new in our country, uh, what has been happening around the world. And they'll get someone from India, someone from South Africa, someone from, you know, all of us can answer. And, and, and it's, a, it's a really good space to be when you have such a network. Now, uh, one out of nine doctors in New York City is from St. George's. So New York City runs on St. George's, so you know how that is. That is very good. So um, these are testimonials, which you can actually um, get online. They're on our website. So an, an outstanding educational experience that will get you to your goal beca of becoming a practicing physician. So I'll just leave this for a second for you to see. Clinical rotations, you immediately start comparing yourselves to your colleagues. I found that I was completely on par, if not above average compared to everyone else. That's what you want to know. That's where you want to be. And then Tendani, um, now Tendani practices like she's in senior positions now. And she loves the fact that she got an opportunity to go to St. George's and it made her experience or her education pretty. Pretty good. Uh, medical school is not just about intelligence. The process is about staying power and resilience. So we make sure that we support everything else. So we sp support your spiritual, your, your um, psychological, and all these needs are taken care of so that your work is to pass your medical degree. So we just take care of you. And that's the end of my presentation. I'll hand over to George if you have any questions. Victoria, that was just incredible. 
you know, what a well presented presentation. I think I had like a list of questions I wanted to ask you. Okay. And I don't think that they're relevant. I think you've done such a good job in answering them that I want this recording to be shown to as many people as possible. Um, thank you for inspiring a lot of us looking at this. Um, You're very the, welcome. Um, the, I'll the, just post out. Yeah, no, I saw some questions in the chat, but I think I've yeah. answered a lot of them, yeah. Yeah, you covered the matric one um, yeah. quite, um, quite well as well. Um, I'd like to, um, Maybe we could put the slide up or maybe go a little bit more into the um, trick results and what they would expect. Um, okay. Okay, so those are my contacts and Google can get in touch with me anytime. So yeah. um, matric results. So I know in matric you don't do like biology and chemistry and physics. They don't stand, they, they're not standalone subjects, but you do life sciences and physical sciences. Now, we don't expect you to break that down. However, you need to pass the chemistry, the physics, the biology, and I don't know what comes, what's in life sciences. I think there is something else. So we expect you to pass those. So you might as well as get 80% and above or 75% at the worst on those subjects. But mathematics um, is a good idea to pass it as well. So you need to be an A, B student. You cannot be yeah. a student and join med school. Yeah. The, um, the one thing just on that as well, when you were talking about the support services and um, you mentioned asking for help, you know, that's something that I wish I had done so much better during my degree was just asking for help. Um, so it was fantastic to see such a comprehensive support package that you guys um, offer that. Was that from the start of SGU or did that sort of evolve into where it is now? Um, because I haven't seen anything that's that comprehensive in terms of support structure for students. Well, with SGU, we have over 40 years experience teaching doctors. So when we started, we were a smaller university. And as we grew, we understood that we need to have a department that takes care of these needs. So it is, um, it is, it has evolved over time. And that's why like the International Students Office came into play five years ago, six years ago. Uh, at the time we had fewer international students. So everything was being managed by the faculty who were international. So there was still support. It just wasn't as structured. And then the Department of Education Services is over 20 years old. They started with two staff members who would look at students who are struggling and call them in and get them tutorials and, and study groups. But now it's a full-fledged department with over 19 staff. So their work is just to take care of the student need for support. So, and then the psychological department, uh, again, we have a hospital on campus. It's not a big hospital, but it's a functioning hospital. And they noticed that most of the students were coming in with complications, not because they're sick, but because they have psychological challenges because of the stress, the anxiety, all these things. So the psychology team started in the hospital with one or two, but now it's a whole team and it's a whole department that functions by itself. So this is, these are some of the things that are important to put in place in a medical school. And we actually in 2019, our Department of Education Services won an award among all the US medical schools. Like we are very good. Yeah, it's great. It's just, I'm looking at these questions here and from different students and um, like I said, you know, done such a good job explaining this. Um, the only two are these two other questions that students have asked on this webinar so far. Um, Zandul Wethu has asked, um, I'm going to read it out. So excuse me yeah. if I am get this one wrong. With regards to the scholarships available, I noticed a clause which stated that upon graduation, the student would require, would be required to return and practice in their home country. Would applying for the scholarship be recommended if one has no intention of returning after completion? Well, there are two ways of returning to your own country. You can decide that you are never looking at South Africa. That can happen. However, you can decide when you become a specialist that you can do visits to support um, 
uh, with certain, let's say you become a surgeon and you say, yeah, I would, I would, I would definitely give some time to come and help back home. So that's the kind of um, requirement that we have. Just tell us if your journey gets through, where would you contribute into your own country? So um, it's your choice. If, if you decide that that is too much to ask of you as a specialist coming from Africa, then it's your choice to forego the scholarship if that's something you feel you'll never be able to do. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's you, we're not saying you come back and leave there. We're just saying, can you contribute? Because we are going to give you a scholarship. Now, the only catch is, um, I should let everybody know, the fees for St. George's is about, you need to have about 16 million runs um, just to be able to get through the campus. So even if we give you a scholarship, it can cover, it can take away about 6 million and you'd still have to cover the rest. So of course there's a detailed, with your follow-up emails, you will get details on, on, on the fee structure, but we're talking about maybe $430,000. I think. And that's on par with, with some of the top schools in the US and around the world. Yep, it is a top school. And it's actually cheaper because you're not taking seven years to complete something that you can do in five years. We reduce your, your cost for living expenses by three years or two years. Yeah. Um, yeah. With, the, um, with the pandemic, and um, um, Kamal has asked a question here, um, yeah. is the August 2021 intake online. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll go a little bit into that and sort of also showcase people what happened with the pandemic with current students and how the learning activities happened this year. I think that's also prevalent to what students are looking at. Um, okay. Okay. So like any other country, islands are actually more restrictive in terms of COVID-19. And that's why students cannot travel to Australia right now. Australia is an island, so you have to protect yourself. So we, Grenada had to close its borders initially, and then we opened up uh, just before the mutated um, COVID-19 came into play in the UK. And then we closed again, uh, flights from the UK were more restrictive. So um, Grenada's priority was to protect the people on the island. And then when it opened up, um, these, there was quarantine. There's, you remember the first time there was quarantines, people were in hotels and then you would go home after 14 days or after your PCR test. So now um, St. George's University, the hospital is the one that does the PCR tests in Grenada. So our students uh, land on, land at the airport of course you have to fill in an authorization to be allowed to come on campus and then you quarantine on campus for 14 days and then you do your pcr before you're allowed to um to continue staying on the island the only thing is everything is online so even if you traveled on the to the island um you don't go to class you stay in your rooms um, you go to common areas where there's, there's um, COVID-19 specifications of where you sit, how you interact, and you do everything that's required for COVID-19. So our class of August, January 2021, uh, August 2020, all of them are online. And the reason they're online is because um, we did not want the students to travel to the island because if there are too many people on the island, the island doesn't have enough health facilities to take care of everyone. So their national hospital would be overrun if there was a case of um, contacts, um, COVID-19 infections on campus. So um, 2021 August, um, everything holding steady and we pray that the vaccines um, starts taking effect the same restrictions that would probably be in South Africa would be on the island. However, uh, it would mean that we would have few students who come on campus. So if the situation continues to have restrictions for flights from the UK or flights from the US, because the US situation is actually getting worse than the UK, um, 
we then would then oblige we have to um we have to accept those restrictions and and move forward so the decision for us is made between the government of um of grenada uh with the minister of health and um and uh with the university itself and the global directions from who so studying online um that has been really interesting Initially, uh, there were students who were like, I don't want to study online, I want to go to campus. And then now I have a student who's telling me, actually, I have a few who are telling me, I'd rather stay home. I'm actually studying better when I'm at home and, and online. Yes, they are missing some things, um, the camaraderie of being med schools together, but some students are actually managing pretty well. So it's um, it's becoming closer to the opening of the world or us starting with the new normal uh, online studies might continue but it just depends on what the world is what is happening in the world right now so i cannot commit and say um august or january 2022 or august 21 we will be um going to campus yeah right oh, except for students who come from difficult situations where and that's not that has to be something that can be proven for example you have a student who is a sponsored student who lives in a village and cannot move to um, a big city because they are sponsored and they are stuck so their internet is down um, they're missing classes they're having challenges so case by case we do assess but it's a very strict assessment yeah. Um, I've got a question here from an anonymous um, person here. Um, in the pre-clinical pre years, can we get a single room dorm by ourselves? And um... that's, that's, everybody asks that. And I totally understand why, um, why we would like to get that. But I'll just let you know right now, it's not possible um unless you have a medical condition that requires you to have a single room uh because everybody is equal when you come over so um it is it is the the situation however uh, like i said we we do have people who can assess that for us so yeah yeah and, all, and also from like a, a a network point of view you know you're coming to a new location you're going to be meeting new people for the first time and you know, some of the big relationships I've had have been with roommates that I've lived with on campus. Um, so it's something I would recommend to anybody listening in on this webinar is um, don't be shy from it. It's something, get out of that comfort zone. Um, you see, we're it, is, all it, is, it is hard at the beginning. I, I wouldn't let you, I wouldn't tell you no, especially if you've never been to boarding school or you've been this person who keeps to themselves. But um it's it's easier than survivor for sure so it's actually in a space where you're nurtured and everybody has the common goal of passing their exams so there's no time for what you're afraid of is the the whole interaction and all you will interact you will cook dinner together you will go shopping together but you all have the same goal i have to score 80 percent on every exam i take so you don't have time to even think about that. And then um, like, like George said, and, and not to display my age, um, my university uh, roommates are my friends after 26 years. Yeah. Go figure. <laughs> They're still yeah. my friends. Yeah. I want so, to ask you, What's what's the one place in in Granada or at SGU in Granada, the one place that you would tell a student to go and see and they must check it out? Ooh, okay. Um, one of the places, first of all, Fish Friday. Fish Friday, if you're a fish person and you love everything sea, you have to do a Fish Friday. Fish Friday is, um, it's in a little town that's very close to St. George's. So they are actually vans from St. George's, the university vans that take you there on Friday. And you walk around and it's like a fish market and everything is cooked and you eat anything from lobster for very cheap. Uh, 
lobster, shrimp, anything you want that's from the sea, you will have it. And then there's the local way of making it. There's an international way of making it. So you just taste all this. By the end of the day, I had tasted so many um, seafood that I had never tasted before. It's like being in Mozambique or something where you just eat, or Cape Town, where you just eat mm. so much from the sea. Yeah. And oh, and, um, yeah. I, I, sorry, you were saying something about Pano? No, no, go for it. No, go for it. Okay. So um, on summer breaks, by the way, the terms begin in January. And for MD4, they have three entries, January, April, and August. And then for preclinical, you have two entries. That's January and August. So I know for matric results, they come out in January, except for this year, it's kind of weird, but they come out in January. So you can join in August. Or if you have A-level results, um, I think yours come out August as well. So they would come out August 11th. And if you're feeling confident enough, um, you can actually start traveling to Grenada if you're going to Grenada and your results will come with you on the plane and then you get in. So it, it's, it's a risky move, uh, but you must be very sure that you're scoring those scores because if you come on campus and your finals come and they're lower than expected, we will send you home. So it's a good idea to just think about it because if you don't start in August, you only have September, October, November, December, and January, you're in class. So it's, it's a choice you make. You can decide, hmm, I don't know. Let me see how it goes first. But most people, the ones who are A students throughout usually just decide, look, I'm, I'm going for it. So it's a choice. Now, during uh, the term begins uh, January to April, May, January, February, March, April, May. And then June, you take a break. July, August, you're back on campus. So June and July, you're off. August, you're back in campus. Uh, then you go all the way to December. So there are two terms in a year. So you never do more than two terms in a year. Now, summer breaks and December. December, most people take a break, but you can stay on the island. You don't have to travel home or you can join a selective. Selectives are... You can go for two weeks to Honduras, uh, you can go Thailand, uh, you can go Prague, you can come to Kenya, um, you can go to, um, you can join a surgery selective. So if you're interested in a particular area like surgery, pediatrics or whatever, they run selectives for two weeks where you're exposed to that. So, or you go, when you go to Honduras or Thailand, or in Thailand, you learn alternative medicine for two weeks. Honduras, mm -hmm. you learn about um, the Amazon and how that works for you to, to, to um, learn to treat differently. Um, if you come to Kenya, uh, you go to the Masai Mara, but not as a, as a tourist, but as somebody who's working with a community unit um, to help with diseases and, and you know, dewarming and different things. Or, and, and you do get to see the animals. You do get a holiday in there somewhere. And then if you go to Prague, you're in a European city that's a little different uh, from your typical UK and, 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 and um, other countries. So you go to Prague and you're in that health system. Uh, you come to um, the different countries. So all these selectives are available, but there are something that you need to save money to pay for, but you don't pay more than two, 5,000 or $2,500 and you pay your ticket. So all these things you can do, it's up to you to take advantage during your breaks. Mm. But if you want to be a surgeon, you can go and see surgery and participate for two weeks. So it's up to you. It really is. I've got another question. We've got three that have just come in here. Um, I'm going to presume Blessed um, is writing SATs in South Africa. Um, yep. So this question is, what grade does the university require for a student to take the course? At what SAT scores should a student get to get admitted? Um, so I'm okay. presuming he's asking, do you, do you accept SATs from somebody in Southern Africa? Um, and what mm -hmm. would those look like? Would this be SATs with the American school or are you doing SATs after matric? 
do you want to find out from the person? I hope they yeah, can answer. The, but yeah, you want to. Um, sorry, we, sorry, Richard. Sorry, it's okay. We do expect you to still be at the same level as an eighty percent. So you have to be the top, the top students. So uh, if you're getting anything equivalent to the A's and the B's, that's what we expect. Um, yes. Blessed, please reach out to. But we, um, we don't need SAT, by the way. Yeah, and, and that's a great point there as well. Um, but like any, with any questions when it comes to admissions and that, please do reach out to Victoria and to us at Global and um, start your conversations as soon as possible. Get the right information there as well for that. Um, yeah. We've got one more question for you, um, and and we've I know we've gone well over the one hour here, but I I just think this webinar has been great for everybody um I, i've personally really enjoyed it it's would have um this is from another anonymous person um, would having a bsc honors degree um place you in a more favorable position to enter the four year four year md program okay any bachelor of science honors or not would put you into the four-year program we just need you to score the right grades and then the last question from Blessed again was, um, how long is the neuroscience programs at SGU? Uh, we don't have neuroscience programs. Um, so let's say you want to become a neurosurgeon or a neurologist or one of those. Um, you finish studying MD and then you go to specialize in those areas, but we don't have a neuroscience program. Brilliant. Victoria, thank you very much for your time. Um, it's been very insightful and it's always a pleasure to have you on here and to showcase um, SGU into Southern Africa. Um, everybody who's listening on this webinar, um, I'm going to leave um, Victoria's presentation on the screen. Please take her email address. Um, you know where to find Global. We're here and we're here to help. Um, Victoria, thank you again. Really do appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening. Thanks, George. Cheers, Victoria. Good night, everybody, and please keep safe.